Welcome, this is Blaze. We're here at the African American Firefighter Museum at 1401 South Central. That's right off the Santa Monica Freeway. We're here doing a fundraiser. And the theme, of course, is a piece done by Cynthia St. James entitled In Unity. Uh, you remember back with us? The New York City Fire Department lost 343 members at 9-11-2001 World Trade Center collapse. Twelve of those members were men and women, African Americans, who received very little exposure. The Vulcan Society of the International Association of Black Professional Firefighters contacted Cynthia St. James and expressed to her that they needed healing. In this universe, oh, God is all in all. Once upon a time, in a land far to the west, a beautiful baby girl was born. She was like a lot of other children in most ways. The girl loved to dream. The child might have lived an ordinary life except for a special gift that brings beauty and brilliance to the world. The gift of art. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to the African American Firefighter Museum. We're going to start our program right now. My name is Brent Burton. I'm the president of the museum. And let me just show my manners and take my hat off because I'm inside. And it's Sunday. That's right. We're so delighted that you decided to spend your Sunday afternoon with us. You know, the Grammys are going on, the Lakers are playing, but you're here. And we're, we're just delighted that you are here with us. We have a wonderful afternoon planned for you. We have jazz out in the back. We have Jacques Lejeure and his trio playing, so be, be, uh, make sure you're out there checking them out. And, of course, the lovely art from Cynthia St. James is here, and that's why you're here. And also, let me tell you a little bit about this museum. How many of you are here for the first time? Okay. Now, this museum is the only freestanding African-American firefighting museum in this country. So you are on holy ground. This at one time was one of two segregated fire stations that African-American firefighters were only allowed to work at in the old days. This station was built in 1913 and it housed black firefighters between 1924 and 1955. If you came up Central Avenue, you passed another firehouse at 34th and Central. That was the second firehouse that black firefighters were allowed to work at until they integrated in 1955. We have a brochure that's real lovely, and we'd like for you to take a look at it. Right outside near the door, there's a table that shows the museum and some of our history and some of our flyers. So make sure you grab one. We are open every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. This museum is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that we are strictly donation driven and volunteer driven. So how do we last 10 years? I don't know. <laughs> we also have a fundraiser that we're doing and some of you may have seen this, some of you ladies may have seen this. It's the 2008 Los Angeles Men of Fire calendar. And Miss Cynthia Tucker is at the table right there taking counter orders and selling the calendars. So make sure you stop by and see her. In fact, on last Friday evening, two nights ago, we had a wonderful calendar release party here where nine out of the 12 firefighters on the calendar were here signing autographs, and it was very nice. So if you missed it, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, people want to know, am I in this calendar? Yes, I am in this calendar. I'm Mr. December. See, Mr. December is this guy right here, but I'm the little guy right there in the kitchen. But I'm going to present this to Cynthia, but before she does, she has to do something for me. You know, did you know Cynthia was a firefighter? In fact, she's a fire captain. <laughs> captain St. James, come on up here. <laughs> Cynthia was given this helmet by Captain Tommy Orso, and this calendar is presented to her. This is hers. <laughs> and did you know that Cynthia was the first black homecoming queen at LA High School in 1967? Did you know that? <laughs> Right. <laughs> also, upstairs is our museum gallery, and it is open, and we have a living legend upstairs. Mr. Arnett Hartsfield is an 89-year-old retired firefighter that started here, yes. 
and he doesn't use the elevator, he takes the stairs. And upstairs with him is another one of our heroes, retired firefighter Roger Duncan is upstairs as well. Roger Duncan was a Tuskegee Airman when he was in World War II. Wow. So we have a lot of living legends here, and Mr. Hartsfield is dying to listen to tell the story to you about his experiences and how they integrated the L.A. Fire Department and made it beneficial for people like myself and others today to wear the badge and be firefighters. So we owe a great debt of gratitude to him. So we just admire, want you to go upstairs and make sure you do talk to him. Right now I'm going to introduce our illustrious and lovely Mas Mistress of Ceremonies. She is the president of Sisters at the Well. She is the close confidant of Susan Taylor, of Essence, formerly of Essence Magazine. And here today in her lovely red outfit, I'm going to bring to the mic the none other but Miss Barbara Perkins. You all look wonderful. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood with beautiful folk at this fire department. This rich, full of memories, institution. I was reading today about black institutions and I thought of this place. So in honor of the people who came through here, the rich heritage, our ancestry, that were committed, spine straight up, proud people who made it possible for us to assemble today. In the winter, 70 degrees, California, they made it possible for us to be here too to take in all that's being served and offered today. I'd like for us to stand, those of us who could, to stand in honor and memory of all of those who wanted for us what we have so much of. So we wanna just salute them with a moment of silence. And in gratitude we say thank you, right? Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon. Once again, I'm Barbara Perkins, and for today I'd like to introduce myself as the wife of retired fire captain, L.A. fire captain, Stanley Perkins, who's cooking. <laughs> so you see this wonderful art, and if you haven't seen it, I know you feel it. Because the work of Cynthia St. James is just simply amazing. The work tells the story. You almost don't need to hear any dialogue about the work. It's so diverse. It's so vibrant. It speaks to you. You stand by her work and it speaks to you. And so I know you feel it and you see it, but I want the lady, not Captain St. James, <laughs> but the fine artist, Cynthia St. James, someone who I've come to know very well and love, and who surrounds my walls and my house with beauty and energy and kindness and laughter. And that's what I see from your work. And our stories in the featureless faces that she paints, I make my stories. I put myself in it, I put my families in it. And so, None other than my wonderful friend, <laughs> Cynthia St. James, is going to come up and share a little bit about her work. We're so glad that we have had such a wonderful turnout. I know even more people will be here, but it means so much because of... Brett and I first talked about doing this, we mistakenly thought of Super Bowl Sunday. We were going to do it last Sunday. But we realized that that would have never worked. So, <laughs> so that's why we changed the day, and it ends up being like um, uh, the day before my birthday. So I feel like I'm here celebrating my birthday. Yeah, I'm celebrating my birthday, which will make it uh, actually 39 years of selling my work. Yeah, 59, 59, so it's my 59th birthday, so I'm th thinking of that too. 
Then when we decided to do this, I said I wanted to make it extra special. I know that there's times that we donate what we can as far as a, a percentage of the sales go to. But I decided to treat the museum as a gallery. So whatever you purchase today, 40% is going to the museum. So that'll be my contribution. Uh, they first, I was first embraced by the firefighters right after 9-11 when I was commissioned to do a piece memorializing the 12 African American firefighters that was lost at that terrorist attack. So um, Brett was one of the first people to purchase that piece. So I have that here too. Uh, I'm selling it as a you know, limited edition. <laughs> but there's so many women involved in this as firefighters as well. So about a year ago is when I got my I, can't, I went straight up to the ranks, the captain. I mean, <laughs> you know. But thank you so much for being here. And enjoy your visit here. Thanks. Summer for the first book festival. Any questions? Did that cover it? Did I do good? She did good, but I want to ask her a few more questions for you because I know you're thinking about this. Cynthia, tell us about your work with children's books. With children's books. Well, there's what you've done with that. Oh. There are 17 children's books. Uh, three of them I wrote and painted. Um, each book is anywhere from 18 to 30 paintings. It's a big job. <laughs> it's a very big job. Uh, but I, the most, uh, I think the, the biggest warmth I get is from being around the kids that read them and that get to meet me and they go like, wow, I could grow up and color for a living. <laughs> You know, because like, if, you, if you're an artist, I said, wow, could you really be an artist for a living? So I know it encourages so many little kids. And I knew that I wanted to do this since I was five. You know, so my mom's right there. She can tell you. <laughs> and she was there in the very beginning, lean years, of, and bringing me care packages. And, you know, I was like, I was on welfare. <laughs> but my mom was the one supporting me. <laughs> bringing me big cheeses and I had tuna for days. I have stopped. I cannot eat chuck light tuna anymore. I can only eat albacore. So, you know, so there's a lot, there's been a lot of support and family and, and even just seeing people. And uh, my biggest award was actually a Coretta Scott King Award for illustrating a children's book. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Anything else? They keep asking me. They keep <laughs> asking me questions. Oh, she has one. Uh -huh. um, where did you go to college and did you major in art? I'm one of those self-taught artists. Yeah, I just wouldn't. I, I would have to tell you one thing. When I would go in the store in New York to buy my supplies, uh, sometimes back paintings back then in the 60s, late 60s, um, I actually cut out sponges and I used them to, to design with, with oil. Uh, but I just, it's all been a journey. I'm constantly learning. And I think that's one of the nicest things. One of my very close friends, Charles Bibbs, that did go to school you know, and got a degree and everything, he said that what he loves about me is I, I didn't have anybody telling me what I could or could not do. And, and, and knowing me, he started putting colors together that his instructors always said shouldn't go together. Right. <laughs> yeah. The world knew about it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of tough. <laughs> well, I, I'd have to say this. The one that changed the most was actually Terry McMillan waiting to exhale. That cover went international in eight different countries. They came to me for the, to use permission to use that. In Japan, <laughs> you know, in Finland, in Spain, in France, they all came to me for that. What also came out of that was children's books. The publisher of the book, uh, they loved the color so much that so they asked me if I ever considered doing children's books. And so you just, I'm ready for anything. So yes, yeah, so, so 17 books later, so Terry. Um, oh, so much stuff. I've even doing a television home shopping network. We did home shopping network and had watches with the, with the ensemble on it that sold out in 10 seconds or something. Uh, so I would say that, that is the biggest. That would be the biggest? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Tell them how, if you're available for, Cynthia and I teach a class together <laughs> once a year at uh, Pacific Oaks College in Pasadena for teachers that teach children. 
And so we do this once yeah, a year. We do this. I think that's, that's a lot. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough, Barbara? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So as you can see, I mean, and there's so much more. Every year we, we teach this class together and the students come from all over the country um, into this workshop to find out about how do we take art and unify the world by opening up the world for children in a visual way. And Cynthia, when they, when they first gave me this class and said you have an opportunity to bring in guest speakers, I thought, there is only one person to bring in to just show the world how, show teachers how to help young people open up themselves to the world and the world to them. So actually what Cynthia does is she goes through a whole process of showing them how she puts the books together, the pop-up book. And I mean the, the students, they're, they're adult women and men and they are like little children when you see them watch how these books come alive in the classroom, so we do that together, and it's just amazing, and again, she's not the kind of person who just tells you much about what she does, but I would ask you to go to Cynthia's website, and I know it's on the paperwork that you have. You will just be amazed to see the amount of work, the body of work that this woman, this self-taught fine artist, I mean, has done is just simply amazing, and for that we owe you gratitude. There was, and this is the last piece I'm going to say. There was even a Jeopardy question oh, yeah. on Cynthia St. James. I have it on tape, so I play it in my class, and then the music comes on, and everybody says that's Jeopardy, and then there's a question about the Kwanzaa stamp, correct? I, you know you made it when you uh, when you get a Jeopardy question, you know. <laughs> I, I sometimes refer to Cynthia as a celebrity, and she goes, celebrity? <laughs> yes, you are a celebrity to us, and we see you, Cynthia. Thank you. Let me thank the sponsors for today, and I think we're going to go into the tour. Is that what's next for us, Marie? Oh, Lavelle, one of yes. our sponsors for today? Yes. And the event planner. But let's thank the sponsors and the supporters, and I know we have a room full of VIPs. That would be all of us. And I also know that there are some elected officials that I'd like to get your business cards so that when we resume, I can acknowledge you properly. But thank you, and how are we doing the tour? I'm gonna turn it over to Brent Burton, the president of the museum, and um, you direct us for the tour. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Basically, it's like this. We have a self-guided tour on the first floor, and upstairs is a self-guided tour. If you have any questions, let us know. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the art. The jazz is paused for the cause. Enjoy. Okay, so, so, family, family, we have another special guest in the house. No stranger to us, we all know him. And if you don't, you should. It's our good senator, Mark Ridley Thomas. Come on over here. Hey, out of the family. Madam MC, ladies and gentlemen, family members, immediate and extended, every time I can be supportive of the work of this museum, I seize that opportunity. And I'm as proud of what goes on here as I can possibly be. It's important for us to claim the history of our experience and to celebrate art and culture at the same time. And that's what's effectively being accomplished here. 
And I want to say to these African American fighter, firefighters and all that they represent, we respect you, we celebrate you, and we think highly of you because of your fine taste in art. And so to Cynthia St. James, a legend in her own right, don't you agree? Uh, she, um, she, she's blessed us all over again and she even has caused Leroy Hamilton to have a greater appreciation for art. And, that, and that's, a, that's a good thing. So I, I'm here to say that the arts are important, history is important. This is African American History Month and it's fitting that we're here celebrating our tradition. So thank you and God bless you all. Now, Maybelline Paxton is here doing something she has no business doing. And, um, Madam MC, I'll leave it to you to expose what those details are. Thank you. This is our Senator. And you know what, Senator Ridley Thomas, Cynthia, have you been recognized by the state yet? The state of California? No. Well, this is probably the man to do it. Consider it done. See, that's how we do business, right? Thank you. We talk to the powerful people. When they're in the house, we just give the message. Thank you. Judge Maybelline, we're celebrating here in the African American Firefighters Museum the rich history. We want you to come up and say a couple of words. Come on. We know you shopping. Wait, we know the good senator already put you on blast. You shopping. We know that. Well, come on up here and say hi. Hello to everyone. Um, all right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's really an um, honor and a pleasure for me to be here at the Firefighters Museum some friends who are visiting with my sisters who are visiting with me from out of state, Judge Ernestine Doris from Memphis, Tennessee, and Judge Patricia Banks. I said, this is my hood. <laughs> this was my fire station when I was a child. The response in my community at 32nd Street off Central Avenue came through this fire station. So it is always wonderful, a great feeling for me to come back to this firefight fire station and now that is the African American Firefighters Museum. I have lived in the Los Angeles area over 55 years so I've seen the growth and development of Los Angeles and the contributions that our fire firefighters are now making to our nation and it's absolutely wonderful to have this museum here so that our children will know and understand the rich history of what you have contributed to America. To my good friend, the artist, Cynthia St. James. St. James. <laughs> Somehow, wherever she is, it's a must that I be. I enjoy her artwork so much. And if you don't have one of her pieces, you don't know what you're missing. It's an absolute great artist. Um, I commissioned her to do the piece for the Maybelline Ephraim Foundation for my cups and souvenirs and all the things that we sell. So I really think she's a great artist. She gives a lot to our community. She's always donating so much so we had to sit down with a meeting with her and say, Cynthia, you got to make some money. You can't donate all the time. <laughs> we have to charge something because we want our people to be recognized for the quality of their work. And we have to learn to support and support one another and to purchase work from each other just because you know them. It's great work and it deserves the price. So pay the price and support Sister St. James. To all of you, may this be a wonderful month of remembrance of where we've come from. Isn't it great to see that in the 21st century in America, we have a choice for president. We have a choice for president. With so many elections, has been the lesser of the evils, and you just choose one of the evil ones. And, um, but this time, we have a real choice. I, we can't lose if you go with Hillary or if you go with Obama, but we have an absolute choice. It's not, you know, Jesse ran. It was, like, you know, you understand that that was history making, and it was it was time for to make a statement. Shirley Chisholm ran 
because she had the strength, the courage, the capacity to run. And we knew that it wasn't yet time, but they, they told me, you better get ready. You better get ready because we come. So Shirley said we're coming. Jesse said we're coming. Then Al turned around and said, uh, we still coming. We still coming. And now the rock says, I'm on your heel and I'm about to knock you out. And that's the greatest story of all. So I'm excited about this election. I'm excited to be here at this time in history. And I'm going to do a shameless plug. Um, <laughs> TV One has purchased uh, the show Divorce Court, my seven years. They purchased part of those seven years. As of February 14th, it will be airing on TV One. Valentine's Day, the love day. They're doing a 14-hour marathon of the voice going on Valentine's Day. Wow. What's that all about? You may not want to do that. I don't know. But then again, you may because we got some interesting cases so you can avoid some of the problems that happen on Valentine's Day that make you not have a Valentine. Anyway. Uh, and then just keep your eyes open for me. I'm in negotiations for a new deal. And Father's Day, Maybelline Even Foundation, we honor fathers June 15th. Bye. Okay, man. Okay, that's a wrap. We love you, Judge Maybelline. We really, really do. And it was not a shameless plug. What we do is we share good news, and that's good news. So thank you for being here. Make sure you buy our fundraiser Los Angeles Men of Calendar, Men of Fire Calendar. And please purchase the art from Cynthia. And we're going to enjoy some cake right here. So again, I'm going to thank Marie Mel, Barbara Perkins, Miss Cynthia St. James, Stan Perkins, Jacques Lejour, Cavassier, and all of you for coming. Thank Bob Blake and Rosalind Lake and Senator Mark Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Happy birthday to Cynthia.